In this episode of Mighty Car Mods, we work on one of the best white Nissans that we have in our whole collection. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods. Last episode, we disrespected your nose intensely. And this episode, I intend to re-respect it and get this car working. I've actually found a few more things wrong with my mad little old March Super Turbo. It's nearly 30 years old, um, just boring, annoying old car stuff. So this episode, I'm gonna go through and fix up as much of it as I can, as well as some tasty mods, which I'll show you soon. It's not all honks, bonks and fun times in the little Nissan. We recently discovered the fuel tank has a lot of stale old fuel in the system and the tank is actually starting to corrode. I've got myself a fuel tank cleaning kit which has a few different levels of treatment depending how bad it is. The first step is to fill the tank with the cleaning solution and hot water and shake it around heaps. What comes out looking like the world's grottiest milkshake is actually the old gummed up fuel and a bit of rust. A blast with the pressure washer gets rid of the rest of it. It's important that it's rinsed really well and then left to dry completely before fuel goes back into it. I've left a fan on it overnight and also blasted it with a heat torch to make sure it's completely dry. My fuel tank is fully reconditioned and by fully I mean what I can do in the shed, which is pretty awesome. So the inside's looking really, really clean now. All the mostly sort of gum and old dried up fuel has come out. Not actually that much rust, which is awesome. So I had a full treatment kit in case it was rusted that would basically rust convert the inside. But by the time I washed it out a couple of times and pressure washed it, um, it's actually mostly just gum. So that's good. There's a little bit of tiny bit of crap in it, but it's, it's, I'm really happy with how that's turned out anyway. So our new pump has gone into the hanger, which we've also cleaned up, and now I can drop that back in. This rubber O-ring is a good idea to replace if you can get one. There's no parts for this car in Australia, so I'm gonna have to recycle it. Um, but what I have managed to find is uh, a mix and match of parts for the brakes, which is awesome. So we'll do that next, but I'm gonna throw this back in, then I'm gonna put the tank back in the car, and then we can fill it up with fuel, and hopefully it will be happy. I don't actually know how to do that. There we go. The fuel pump hanger with its brand new fuel pump can be bolted down into the tank and then the tank can go back into the car, right after I clean up the threads on some of the mounting points. Then the wiring and plumbing can be reconnected. Next, it's time to give the braking system some love. I'm gonna remove the discs and drums, give them a tidy up and a new coat of paint. There's plenty of thickness on both the drums and the shoes, so this is part maintenance and part aesthetics. After blasting, brushing and cleaning any loose crud off the back brakes, I can remove the front discs and give the mounting faces and calipers a good clean out with brake cleaner. Things have escalated, as they often do, particularly with an old vehicle like this, um, where I'm just finding more and more little things that I want to fix up while the car's in the air and while I'm waiting on parts. So I found some brakes, which is cool, they'll be here soon. Uh, the problem is also the bearings of these pulleys that run the aircon and everything, they're just a bit flogged. Um, they are a reasonably standard size, so you can just take them to a bearing shop with the old one, take it, show them, go, please give me one of these, and press a new one in. I actually don't even need to press it, this one's got a circlet. So that makes it super easy. And this one I think might need to be pressed, but either way, it means our tension is everything here is all new. It's just those little things that, you know, these are out in the weather getting sprayed with dirt and water and crap all the time. And they do wear out after 30 years. So I'm gonna replace them. And then our fuel tank is now in and we can put some petrol in it, do the exhaust. Actually, there's heaps to do. I'm not gonna try and list it, but first we're gonna do bearings. Accessory belts wearing out is no fun because you either lose power steering, air con, your alternator, or all of the above. These tensioners keep the belts working correctly, but the bearings are often forgotten about. Luckily, they're easy to get out and easy to change. And while they're out, I'll give them a coat of paint along with my brake parts. It's no good cleaning the fuel tank and changing the fuel pump without also changing the fuel filter, which is the last line of defense against grot before it hits your injectors and then your engine. So I'm gonna get the old one out, which involves pulling half the engine bay apart. This thing here is the anti-honk device. There's a couple of vacuum lines also coming out of it, so it's kind of important in terms of balancing everything up. But basically that's just there to make it honk less, um, which I think is offensive. 
and should be removed as soon as humanly possible. So I'm gonna do that, maybe not today, but the Honk device is going. Um, I had a front mount on my old March Super Turbo back in the day, which I really liked, but there's no easy way to route the piping. So I think I might stay top mount for this one just to keep it neat and looking original. But yeah, Andy Honk device, I think I might remake something and get rid of that because it's not good. Right, that's done. So you've got to pull apart basically half the engine bay to get to the fuel filter, but it is done and that fuel was so gross and brown that I'm very glad it's been changed. I may have to change it again too, depending how that goes. Uh, next up, I'm going to move on to the brakes now. An upgrade for this car is Nissan Pulsar brakes, which is N14 or N13, but you do have to mess around with spacers to make it all work properly. Um, and you have to find the calipers, which these days is actually getting a little bit more tricky. Um, in the meantime, because I haven't been able to have much luck finding that stuff, um, and I actually ordered rotors, but they were wrong, I've got the ones that we've got um, reconditioned or skimmed, so they've got enough thickness that that's fine, but I do have pads because they're off a CA18 180SX, which is pretty awesome. So I'm gonna put a new set of pads in and some machined rotors, and then the brakes will be done, and then we can start it. The exhaust is the only thing I'm waiting for. I can't actually get the V-band um, to adapt properly, so I've got to do a little bit of work on that still. Uh, but once we can put some fuel in it and actually start it up, we'll make sure that the whole fuel system works and the thing still runs. So I have done as much as I can on this car for the day. Pretty excited actually, I mean it doesn't look any different but I just not, I like knowing that brakes are done, fuel system's done, just sort of cleaning things up as I go. Now the next thing I have to do and the reason I'm stuck for today is these are the bearings out of the pulleys. Um, so I'm going to take them to a bearing shop and see if I can just get them replaced. It's easier to take them. Sometimes I've got numbers on them but I think these are either too far gone or maybe they're the original factory ones and don't have numbers. Uh, so see if I can just replace them, press them into the pulleys and put them on and then I can actually start it. And the only thing left to do then is exhaust. So the battery's plugged back in, the fuel pump has been plugged back in, it's got a full tank of fuel, new fuel filter, and so we should be right to start it. No um, front pipe on it, but that will be okay. Pump is spinning, hasn't primed yet. Probably won't, straight up. We're waiting to hear the fuel pressure come on. Come on. We broke it. Nah, I reckon the fuel comes backwards. You know, sometimes they sound a bit funny when they're wired backwards. And remember how the plug was different? We swapped it. Remember? I reckon that's why. Oh. oh hang on. Maybe not. Huh? Nah, it's doing something weird. You can hear it. it Sound like it was gonna prime. There's, there's no, there's nothing in it. It's all air in the line, so. Next time on Mighty Car Mods, we wire our fuel pump correctly the right way. See you later. No, next time, people, we are gonna be honking this episode. But before we kick on with the build, I want to show you our mad new JDM inspired grey hoodies. They've got these awesome little thumblets here where you can put your fingers through. They've got the chop fingers on the front. They've got a little zipper here that's got a mad concealed little zip on it. On the back, 
you got the big chop finger so everyone knows you're repping, and on the front, you got this mad black detail around the front. But I know what you're asking, what's in my pocket? I'll tell you what's in my pocket, it's candy. That's right, we make candy now, and we're going to be giving a packet of this candy away for free with any of these orders that come in. There is information down below and a link in the description, so you can grab one of these. We'll ship it to you anywhere in the world, and for a limited time, you'll get some of our mad custom-made candy. Now, back to the build. There won't be any honking for us just yet, and there's still heaps to fix on this mad little nugget. The next challenge is machining our V-band flange to fit the dump pipe that also didn't fit. Marty couldn't find anyone locally to machine it for us, so he went and bought a lathe to do one V-band. Yes, I know. A fitter machinist I am not, and from my very, very first attempt on a lathe, I'm very happy that I managed to make this V-band that's from a completely different manufacturer fit the dump pipe, which has a V-band that's from a completely different manufacturer, and now they made up, which is awesome. V-band clamps usually come in a matching pair, but the side I got locally was completely different. Using my lathe, I was able to cut it to the correct profile, which means I can connect the exhaust. I find myself needing to do this job quite often on cars because you have a nice exhaust system, and it did hurt my feelings cutting this one up. Um, you have this nice exhaust system, but you've changed something up the front, whether it's a turbo or a dump or headers, and you've got to join it back in. So now I have to join that to that, which luckily in this situation isn't going to be too much of a big deal. Just get a nice bend in here, and then weld it all up, maybe with a flex joint in there as well. I'm also going to make use of this mount, which we didn't use last time, because it sort of has nowhere to go, but I think I'll be able to make something to join that up, which will take a bit of the pressure off, and also locate this in the right spot, because if that's not moving around, it's going to make it way easier to join up. Exhausts move around quite a bit when you're driving, whether it's flapping around as you're jumping speed humps, or the expanding and contraction that happens when you get it really hot. If you're installing brackets, it's important there's a bit of flexibility. An exhaust with rigid mounts will end up breaking something, whether it's your headers, dump, turbo, or the pipe itself. I'm gonna reuse as much of the chopped exhaust as I can, as it's more likely to weld cleanly as the metal is the same. The bend I'm trying to achieve is a bit of a tricky one, so it's gonna take some trial and error, and probably a little bit of gap filling. my method of joining this together. I don't know if it's the right way to do it, but I've just cut a bend, measured the back and the front side and tried to cut it. It sort of tried to wander around in the saw a bit, but it's pretty close. I think with a little bit of uh, love from the bench grinder, I'll get the shape of that, the profile of it just right. Because I have, still have some movement up here on this V-band, so it's gonna work. Happy days. The exhaust pipe is made out of stainless steel, so a TIG welder is going to give the best possible finish using stainless filler wire. I'm going to use a MIG welder to tack it in place on the car, however, and then pull it off for its final melt together. Alright, so we have had an exciting delivery just arrive. These here, I can't even believe you can get these. The missing these piece. are the lower control arms. I probably shouldn't be cutting along the thing. I should be cutting like that. Always like cut that. towards yourself. I saw someone the other day wearing a t-shirt that said safety third. <laughs> so I don't know what comes second. Anyway, these here came from the UK. Yeah. And these were on UK eBay. That's right. But then we found a way to get them to Australia. Yeah, they, so to Australia. they do like a global shipping thing where if there's a part like this that you can only get overseas and there's no reason for that seller to send to Australia because they would never have sold one to Australia anyway and it's probably a hassle for them to set up the shipping. And Evo do like a global shipping thing where it goes to their distribution centre and then they'll forward it essentially onto you. And that is a complete lower control arm for a K10 Super Turbo. Look at this. Wow. Look at this. Yes. Brand new parts. How good is that? Because you can't. I couldn't get that bush, and that's really hard to get out if even it's possible at all. And uh, look at that. That's mad. The it's 2022, it's... people. <laughs> the and you we... can buy a brand new part for your super turbo. All we have to do is drill the hole for the um, sway bar because the English one doesn't come with a sway bar. That's pretty cool, though. One hole versus having to try and fully redo them. It looks like it's already got a 
allocation for where that yeah, ball goes yeah, anyway. Yeah. Just go straight through it. Unreal. Mad. Oh, it's so loud, I think I probably should protect my ears with the all new Mighty Car Mods earmuffs. And now, oh wait on, I'm making it seem like you can't hear me, but I actually can't hear you. All right, let's go. See, they did it. Oh, it worked. Yeah, yeah. Your earmuffs help. Cover your ears. Definitely wasn't then the Then you can hit harder. Need to have 17 mil on that as well. I have drilled my control arm for my sway bar mount. Um, normally you wouldn't have to do that, but these control arms don't exist for this car, but they do exist for K10 Micros that don't come with big chunky front sway bars because this car is set up for handling. Even though when I drove it at a racetrack in Japan, it was uh, abysmal is what I would call it, but it also had like super hard ec economy tires on. So uh, that I think is just about ready to go back in, which is very exciting. So let's install it. It's really common these days for aftermarket manufacturers to make complete parts like this that replace multiple bushes all at once. It can save workshops time as they don't have to recondition, they can just replace the whole thing. The benefit is we're getting three bushes replaced in one go. The final piece of the puzzle, my dump pipe, which I'm pretty happy with. Not amazing welding, but it's going to hold together and actually it looks pretty good on the flange, but I think there's also the quality of the metal comes into it. This is an old scrap that I think is like quite old and so um, it really didn't want to stick but it's all I had so it's what I used uh, and the V-band joined up really really nicely so fingers crossed this should just attach to there still attached to the V-band as long as it does that we are in business get that in first Okay, off the hoist. It was a bigger job than I thought, but I'm so happy with how that's turned out. I'm so happy I've got new control arms under there. My brakes have been fully serviced. Um, and I've got my new exhaust on there, my new dump pipe. So now we should be able to start it and listen to the thing. If it still honks, then we're, we're all right. Here we go. Starts so nice. Sounds pretty much the same. <laughs> awesome. Brilliant. Very happy with that. Now, all that's left to do is take it for a drive. Release the honk button. And from the highways of Japan to the streets of Sydney, what a mad little car. Yeah, this is epic. Lots of stuff got done. And the thing is, when you've got a car of this age, man, you got to keep tickling it. You, you just got to keep tickling. Yeah, everyone wants to live the dream of like a mad old JDM Nugget. I'm one of those people. I love this old JDM Nugget. But the truth is they need some love. Yeah. They really do. And I know we didn't do a whole lot of mods this episode. But, um, but it's, it's driving better than it ever has. Yes. It's smooth, it's honking like a, like a boss. Everything works, like I just really like it, man. Handles and, great. And we've also got a lathe going up on eBay, I understand. <laughs> now I'm gonna use it, man. I've had yeah. some lessons, it's all good. Now right. this is great. So now the plan is just um, enjoy it and drive it. Um, and then, yeah, do some engine management stuff, kind of what we did with your 180, just to yes. bring it into current tech and be able to make sure it's super reliable and it will release a little bit more power too. Yeah. So we have got two white manual turbo Nissan Nuggets. Absolutely. I think we should go for a drive pretty soon, Martin. So keen. Instead of doing like big, big episode, I reckon we just get a couple of cars and just go for a drive. Just take yep. them for a skid, take them for a drive. Yep, done. But well done. Thanks for uh, watching, everyone. Thank you very much for watching, everybody. If you want to support the show, uh, you can go to mightycarmods.com and uh, we will ship you some stuff from our workshop here in Sydney, Australia, <laughs> to you anywhere in the world. Uh, thank you very much for watching. See, See you next, next time. time on Mighty Car Mods.